Uh, going to move into linebackers, and I think it just was good that this comment came up earlier, and I wanted to kind of address it as we get in a linebacker. Um, I, Bleacher Report, I believe it was, said something about if the Bills released Matt Milano, then Denver should jump on him, and uh, I just was like, why, would that, why in the world would they release Matt Milano? If they're going to have any uh inkling to move on from him they would be able to get something from him in a trade for sure there's no way you cut that guy outright i think he's just too damn good and i think um you know him him working back and being in in for a camp uh come july is going to be pretty positive for for this team it looks like he's already done some of the light work at mini camp so i think there's not going to be too much to worry about there for him we'll see you know what what kind of explosiveness and and what kind of pop he ends up having once the packets get on and you can see what he's what he's got going but what do you guys think about that story that was released yeah i mean it, it's it's that time of the off season right I mean, it's, it's, you know, we're going to hear some crazy things and, you know, it's kind of that dead point where a lot of people and a lot, a lot of writers at Bleacher Report, ESPN, you know, all those, all those big names are just looking for, for something to write about. So, um, you know, the overall thought of the article, I understood, you know, I was like, okay, this is a good one, but then you have Matt Milano on there and it's like, okay, that, that makes no sense in, in any way, shape or form, I really would cut him. And, you know, even the reasoning of, oh, well, he was hurt and he's, he hasn't had his best season since two years ago, which at the end of the day is not that long ago. Um, you know, it, I, I understood maybe why they would think it, but at the same time, part of it also could have been, you know, as much as we don't like it in Buffalo, they know that they'll get a reaction out of the mafia if they can, they can put something out there. So maybe that played a factor into why Matt Milano's name was put in that article of, hey, I know that if we put Matt Milano on the Buffalo Bills in here, that and it's an outrageous take. That guess what? Bills Mafia will jump on it, and uh, maybe we'll, it was a little bit of clickbait to get to get the Bills to get Mafia riled up there. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's it's anything to actually look into or actually worry about. Um, just that time of the year where it's before training camp, after the you know way after the draft. Now there's not really too much to talk about got to talk about something right so um yeah i don't i just think it was something that maybe even they didn't pay too much attention to the bills and are just kind of looking at it as oh well he was injured he's making a lot of money is it really worth it to keep him well yes it is i think a lot of buffalo bills fans know that so uh at the end of the day i think it was just a little bit of a little bit of clickbait yeah, uh, I, everything you said I was going to say, like clickbait, trying to get some views, you know, rile up the people on, on a Friday in the summer when there's not a whole lot of NFL news going on. He's been kind of the heart and soul of that defense, honestly, since he got to Buffalo. Um, getting rid of a guy like that, just uh, you just don't do that because players like Matt Milano don't grow on trees. So, um, yeah, just something I think to stir up some people. Uh, nothing more than that. Nothing that – Anybody should put any real value in. Yeah, for as sure. Much as, as much as Bill's Mafia doesn't like to hear it, they know around the NFL, they know that Bill's Mafia, like I said, they know Bill's Mafia loves to loves to get on things like that and get a little riled up because at the well, end of the day, Speaking of news Bill's stuff, Mafia. we got to get ready for uh, next Wednesday's big uh, media dump that they always do. Right before the 4th of July, that's when a whole bunch of players get cut. A whole bunch of NFL news comes out. So, you know, everybody's going to forget about it over the weekend and not talk about it on Monday. There we go. And uh, another, you know, kind of same thing, ESPN kind of did a thing where uh, they were, I think it was ESPN, they were looking at, you know, who they would start a team with. It was Mike Tannenbaum and whoever, whatever network they're on. But uh, they didn't put Josh Allen they said after Mahomes who would you start a team with and one had Burrow I think and Jordan Love and then CJ Stroud so uh just last year I think everyone said Josh Allen so I think that also riled up Bills fans and uh had some people uh scratching their heads and anytime you leave Josh Allen off any sort of list uh people get a little bit up uptight and uh upset about it which is you know probably true I think that outside of Mahomes Josh Allen is 1B number two uh, NFL player in the league. So I, this doesn't make any sense, but, uh, moving on to the linebackers now, I think, um, let's start off with the question and then we'll go into who we got, but is this the deepest group on paper? Um, Scott, we'll start with you. I think it really could be like from top to bottom, they've really solid dudes at this position. Obviously 
uh, another if we're speaking about clickbait kind of stuff. Top linebacker groups in the NFL. I think it might have been Bleacher Report had a top or PFF. Ten. Had, yeah, had a top ten list. Our linebacking group wasn't on that. Didn't think that made a lot of sense given that Matt Milano is an all pro and Terrell Bernard had a really, really good first season starting last year. Um, but even after that, like look at how many injuries we had at that position group last year and how well guys stepped up. I know Dodson isn't here anymore, but Baylin Spector, who's probably our sixth depth, our sixth linebacker on the depth chart, he played really well when he had to come into that game against the Dolphins and until he got hurt in that game against the Steelers. He just has to stay healthy and get on the field. But we got the first two. Dorian Williams showed some flashes last year. He's a great athlete. He was a third-round pick. Nicholas Morrow was a defensive signal caller for the Eagles last season and started every game. He was healthy, and I believe. And then, you know, we used a, a pick on uh, the kid from Washington, Ulufo Show. Um, so that's, you know, not a lot of teams, I would say, have a linebacking depth that you put any six of those guys on the field, obviously we'll see Ulufo Show, like, you feel good about that, and you're not like, oh, no, like so-and-so is coming in like it could be. So, like, all six of those guys are are guys who I think can really make an impact. So I think it is the deepest position on the team, on paper at least. Maybe close close with the D-line, but I think top to bottom, uh, deepest is the linebacking core. Yeah, I mean, it's it, I like Scott said, I'm not sure what positions you would put above them. D-line maybe, running back maybe, but again, there's unproven guys there with Ray Davis and Frank Gore. Um, offensive line could be in that conversation, maybe even tight end as well. Obviously, you have two good guys there in Knox and Cade, and Morris would be that third. So, you know, there, there's, a, there's a couple positions that could maybe – challenge them but yeah at the end of the day um linebacker even though some of them are still unproven i think you have the two high-end guys there with bernard and milano um williams inspector who are both younger but at the same time has shown flashes and can really i think step up if we need them to and then you bring in moro like you said who, who's been around and, and knows and even you know Deion jones is there as well but he's, he's played in the nfl obviously not not the same as he, as he maybe once was but, uh, you know, you have guys that, that might not make this this roster in the linebacking group that would probably easily make it on other rosters. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I I don't want to say for sure that they're the, they're the best because I do think D-line might challenge them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, who knows? This year maybe running back ends up being up there. But, yeah, it's definitely one of the top on the team, if not the top. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, linebacker it's good this year that we have that, that many guys that can play because as we saw last year, and as I saw a comment from Marcus, you know, we, unfortunately you can count on them getting hurt because it's another position. Like we said, that, that, that you do need a lot of depth. So uh, yeah, I mean, linebacker could be, could be that, that deepest at least on the team. Uh, Maybe not the best overall, but definitely the, the deepest in terms of how many guys we can play. Yeah. I had six linebackers as well. I just think that, uh, they're needed, and John was asking about how many play on special teams. A lot of them, four, probably you know three of the three of the four backups there. I think Dorian might see some time there. Uh, Eddie Ulafosho is definitely going to be there, and then I have Balen Specter making the roster over Deion Jones. Um, and maybe if Deion Jones can hang back on the practice squad as a veteran and be there in case of emergency type of thing. But I think um, Balen Specter being able to play special teams, I'm not sure Deion Jones might be willing or really smart to put him in that role. Um, so keeping him is going to be tough. It's probably going to be you know, he would have to beat out Nicholas Morrow, which doesn't seem likely at all. So uh, I got Milano, Bernard, Williams, Morrow, Yolofosho, and Balin Specter as my six linebackers. And uh, Specter, Williams, and Yolofosho definitely. Um, Yolofosho is going to be a special teams dog. This is um, one of those guys that comes in with. Um, Reckless abandon, you know, he plays so fast and with the new kickoff rule and stuff like that, Yolofosho is going to be all over the field and um, he's going to be banging on the door for um, for some defensive snaps, I think, before too long. I think he's definitely going to uh, – he was, he was a, one of the better picks of the draft. We had a lot of heck of a draft uh, for, for the guys we took, and I think, you know, he's uh, just an outstanding – example of you know what the bills have for depth on the defensive uh back seven there and he's gonna show out especially on special teams so um healthy matt we talked about this a little bit the healthy matt milano um i think that his impact is you know not really it, it you can't state it really because it's just 
it's the leader of the defense, you know, his communication first. And then after you get past what he brings and getting folks aligned and, and how he commands the defense um, and helps Bernard with that, you know, I think his, his play and we'll see, does he still have that pop? Does he still explode uh, off the, you know, off his blocks and off the ball to get to where he needs to be. I think that part is, is going to be the uncertainty at the beginning of the training camp. And we'll see how we, how quickly we can put that to bed. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's 29 now, right? He's going to be 30 at the start of the season. Um, so I do get some people maybe being on that side of like, Oh, I am a little bit worried about him coming back, but you know, it happened early in the season last year or earlier in the season last year. Um, he's had a lot of time and, you know, they're, they're easing him back. So I, I trust the, especially, the, especially this, this team there of the bills to, to be able to get him back healthy, um, and, and playing the best football he can. And it also doesn't, doesn't, you know, doesn't hurt to have a guy like Terrell Bernard on your side to make his job easier. Right. So, um, it, it's not as much pressure to come back and be maybe the Matt Milano we knew right away. He still, I think, will be phenomenal out the gates, but maybe it will take him a few weeks to kind of really get back to that all pro, all level, like top tier linebacker. Um, but yeah, having Terrell Bernard there helps him as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, he just, the impact that he has is, is unbelievable. I mean, it, it, he just, he makes the jobs around him easier as well, right? He makes the defensive line's jobs easier, makes the secondary's job easier because you can do a little bit of everything. He can cover, he can play against the run, he can rush the passer, right? He, he can, he's good on the blitz. So he, he does a little bit of everything and he's just, he's a dog, man. He is, you know, you talked about Ula Fosho being a dog. Matt Milano is a dog as well. And, you know, the newest backup quarterback in Miami knows that as well um, with Mike White down there. And as we all know, uh, still still have some some Dolphins fans calling it dirty, which is crazy to me. But, um, you know, we know that he can lay the boom. We know that he can moss people, as Josh Jacobs knows as well. So he can really make plays, make highlight plays, and even just make the, make the small plays as well. And we're hoping that he can come back and do that as well. Um, and I, I have all the confidence in the world in, one, the Bills medical team to get him back to that, and, two, for himself to get back to that. So Matt Milano, I mean, he's the heart and soul. He's the, the best player on this defense, in my opinion, when fully healthy. And I expect him to at least be in that one or two conversation of the top top two players on this defense again this year. Yeah, Milano coming back is going to be huge. And especially, they missed him a ton in the playoffs guarding Travis Kelsey. No one can contain Travis Kelsey. You just hope to slow him down. And Milano is usually, except for Cam Lewis, apparently, because he actually guards him pretty well statistically. But <laughs> Milano is always the guy who is guarding Travis Kelsey. Uh, and in the playoffs, he toasted us. So having him back, uh, to match up against some of the, the big tight ends out there. And in the NFC, we got – or excuse me, the AFC, we got a lot of them. You got Travis Kelsey. You got Mark Andrews. So uh, having him back, I think, in the pass game is going to help a lot because that is, I think, where the linebackers kind of struggled last year when Milano was out was in the passing game and coverage, and that's one of the things Milano is very, very good at. So excited to have him come back. Hopefully he's 100% because I think he was having the best season of his career before he got hurt. I know it was only four and a half games, but he was just like, you watched the film and like he looked different than everybody out there on the field. So really excited to see him come back and hopefully he can get back to you know his old self.